Hi friends, it's Ms. Gardner. So I'm going to quickly do our unit four, week four introduction video. So in this introduction video, as usual, I will bring this up. Um, I'll talk about our essential question. We'll watch our weekly opener video and we will talk about the vocab and high frequency words. We may have time for the interactive read aloud as well. All right, so to start with our weekly opener, we are going to talk about today's essential question for this week. So our essential question for this week is what insects do you know? How are they alike and how are they different? So I'm sure we can think about a lot of different types of insects that we know and we can talk a little bit this week about how they're the same or how they are different, how we can compare them. So let's take a look at our weekly opener video, which will talk a little bit more about our essential question. Insects. What insects do you know about? How are they alike and different? All insects have the same basic body parts, but many things about them are different too. Caterpillars have different colors and patterns on their bodies as they creep along on branches. These crickets hop and jump a lot. They can make a loud chirping sound by rubbing part of their wings against each other. This long-horned beetle crawls. It blends in with the rocks and tree branches where it lives. Many insects can fly, like this orchid bee with its bright blue color. As you can see, insects may have the same basic body parts, but each kind of insect is special. Now, looking a little bit ahead on our learning template, it looks like we are going to be reading a story about different types of insects this week. And I believe the writing prompt for this week is that you're going to get to pick one of those insects and pretend that you are one of them for a day and write what you would eat, what you would see, what you would do. And that sounds like a lot of fun. So I'm excited to read that story that goes along with the writing prompt. So now let's take a look at our vocab words. Ooh, I like these. So to start, we're going to go with our high frequency frequency words. Um, for this week. Again, these are words that you will see in the text that we read this week. So we have caught, know, listen, flew, laugh, and were. So we'll go through those one more time. We have caught, know, listen, flew, laugh, and were. Again, if you want to pause this video to go over those words a few times, you may. Um, so those are the words that I want you to practice really hard for this week. Now let's take a look at our vocab words and we will go through and do the vocab routine. So our first word is different. To be different is to be not the same. So if you're different, you're not, you're out of the usual. Um, you're not or like not ordinary out of the ordinary was what I was trying to say. Um, for example, the weather in the summer is different than it is in the winter. How are your clothes different from the person sitting next to you? So different is how things are not the same. Um, so here again is our example. The weather in the summer is different than in the winter. Then we have the word flutter. Can you guys say the word flutter? So I will actually head to the routine first, then I'll show you the video. So it says in our routine... Let me click you. Flutter means to move or fly with quick movement. So you may see a butterfly flutter from flower to flower. Um, what other animals or things can you think of that flutter? So they're going to show us a little video here about butterflies fluttering. Flutter. Flutter means to move or fly with quick movements. So we have the butterflies fluttering from flower to flower. Um, so the next word that we have is imitate. 
So to imitate is to act like someone or something else. So for example, in the picture that we're about to look at, Anna imitates the way her older sister's dressing. It's almost like she's copying or um, trying to look exactly like her sister. Um, so how would you imitate a monkey? And if we were together right now, I would definitely be having you guys pretend to be monkeys around the classroom, which probably would be a little bit silly, but you can pretend to be one right now if you want. All right, so we have her sister. And we'll click this little imitate right to imitate is to act like someone or something else so she's imitating her sister putting on the scarf she wants to look very similar to her sister all right the next word that we have is resemble can you guys say the word resemble so to resemble is to look like something else. So the fluffy white clouds resemble or look like balls of cotton. Do you resemble anyone in your family? If so, who? So do you feel like you look like anyone in your family? If so, who do you think that you look like? So again, the white, fluffy white clouds resemble balls of cotton. Ooh, I like this word. This is a good one for the summer. So our next word is to protect. This is a good one. If you protect something, you keep it safe. So a helmet that you can wear on your head when you're riding your bike, um, that helps to protect your head, okay? So what do you use to protect yourself in a car? You would use your seatbelt. So again. Protect. If you protect something, you keep it safe. And again, like you can see in that video, that little boy is protecting himself by wearing a helmet while he's riding a bike. That's why I said it's a very important word for the summer. You want to make sure you're protecting yourself. Another way you can protect yourself in the summer is you can put sunscreen on your skin to protect yourself from getting a sunburn. Ooh, and this word is beautiful. I think we've all heard this word before. So something that is beautiful is very pleasing to see or to hear. Um, for example, the butterfly has beautiful wings. Uh, what do you find to be beautiful? Beautiful. Something that is beautiful is very pleasing to see or hear. Ooh, that butterfly does have very beautiful wings. And another word that I like is fancy. Can you guys say the word fancy? So if something is fancy, it's not plain. So those girls, they're wearing fancy hats. What are some things that are fancy? What are some things that are plain? So these girls are wearing very fancy hats. All right, and that takes us back to our high frequency words, which we have already gone over. It does look like we have enough time to read our interactive read aloud. Malibu and Captain, you guys are crazy today. They're very excited to be learning with you guys today. So this story is called Insect Hide and Seek. So I'll play each box for you now. Insect Hide and Seek. What insects have you seen outdoors? Did you look at them closely? What did you see? Insects are all around us but they can be hard to find. That's because some insects are good at hiding. Ooh, I bet they could their camouflage colors and or shapes blend, blend with their into surroundings their environment. and protect them from enemies. In order to spot these insects, you have to look very closely. Have you ever looked at the stem of a rose? The stem has sharp points called thorns. A thorn bug's shape makes it look like one of these thorns. Since thorns aren't tasty, most hungry animals will go right past thorn bugs. Look at the stem in the photo. Can you find the thorn bug? How does it resemble the thorns? Young thorn bugs have another way to protect themselves. They shake together when they sense danger. Their mother feels the stem move and comes to help. So again, this is the little thorn bug right here, and you can see they have that little point that's similar to the thorn. Let's learn about the next insect. Look at the twig in the photo. Can you find the walking stick hiding? Ooh, a walking stick. It looks as if it is part of the twig. That is its disguise. The name walking stick fits this insect perfectly. 
because the shape of its body makes it look like a stick. It is like a thorn bug because it is shaped like a part of a plant. This helps the insect to hide. However, its texture, the way it feels when you touch it, is quite different from the thorn bugs. This insect has the rough texture of a branch or twig. Walking sticks are among the longest insects in the world. One kind of walking stick is 13 inches long. Wow, that's pretty Most long. Most of the time, these insects keep still. If they move at all, they move very slowly. When a tree branch sways in the wind, the walking stick sways right along with it. When you smell a flower, are you also sniffing an insect? It's possible because when a praying mantis sits Ooh, on a flower, its green or brown color blends right in. As the mantis flutters and lands on a flower, it seems gentle and harmless. And for people, that is true. However, this insect hides on flowers in order to catch and eat other insects. Look at the photo. Can you find the praying mantis on the flower? The praying mantis, like the walking stick, sits very still. However, when another insect, such as a bee or butterfly, comes by, watch out. The mantis has legs that look like knives and a mouth like a can opener. <laughs> it uses them to trap and eat the insect. In this way, the praying mantis is different from both the walking stick and the thorn bug. We have one more bug. Birds and search for food like? in a tree, but they probably don't notice a tree that's right in front of their beaks. Wow, this one blends that's in really well. That's because a katydid has a body shape and color that imitates a leaf. It even has veins in its wings that look like the veins on a leaf. So the katydid stays safe by blending with its surroundings, just as the praying mantis, walking stick, and thorn bug do. Look at the photo. Can you find the katydid? While a katydid may not be seen, it can certainly be heard. On warm nights, you might hear groups of them singing to one another. They make their distinctive sound by rubbing their front legs together. And some people think they sound like they are singing the words, Katie did, Katie didn't, Katie did, <laughs> Katie didn't. In this way, the Katie did is quite different from the praying mantis, walking stick, and thorn bug. All right. So those were four different types of insects that they talked about there. So again, I have included on Class Dojo this week the weekly practice book pages. If you would like to take a look at them, um, they have all different type of practice for um, week four of unit four. That is all I have today for our introduction, and I will see you at my next video.